Hi everyone, and welcome back. In our last lesson, we introduced the alternating series test, which can be used to test the convergence of series whose terms flip back and forth between positive and negative. This is just one of a few tests in our library that can handle series with negative terms. A lot of our tests require the terms to be positive. We're gonna see two more tests in the very near future, the ratio test and the root test, that can also handle series with negative terms. Before we do, however, it will be important to distinguish between two types of convergence that can occur for a series with both positive and negative terms, absolute convergence versus conditional convergence. As you'll see in this video, there are certain nice properties that hold for absolutely convergent series that don't hold up so nicely for conditionally convergent series. Okay, here's your definition. Suppose we have a series with terms a, n. We'll say that this series converges absolutely if, when you take the absolute value of each of its terms, this new series is convergent. To see the difference between absolute and non-absolute convergence, consider the following two examples. In each case, I have an infinite alternating series, and in fact, both of these series converge. You can show this using the alternating series test. Indeed, if you ignore the negatives, the terms in the first series are given by 1 over n squared, and the terms in the second series are given by 1 over n. In both cases, these terms are decreasing to zero. So by the alternating series test, both series converge. Do they converge absolutely? In the first case, the answer is yes. If I take the absolute value of these terms, I'm going to get 1 over n squared. And the sum of these terms is a convergent p-series. So yeah, this series will converge, and therefore my original series converges absolutely. What about the second series? Here, the answer is no, it does not. When I take the absolute value of the terms, I get 1 over n, and the sum of those terms is the harmonic series. We know that diverges. Okay, so in each case, we have a convergent series, but one converges absolutely, and the other does not. Is it possible for a divergent series to converge absolutely? No. As you'll see in the next proposition, if a series converges absolutely, it must also be convergent. Okay, here's the proposition. It basically says that absolute convergence is a stronger form of convergence. If you have a series that converges absolutely, then it must also be convergent. Why is this the case? Well, we're actually going to be able to show it's true using the comparison test. So let's suppose that we start with a series that converges absolutely. That is, the sum of the absolute values of the ANs is convergent. We want to show that our original series is convergent, so we need to find a way to relate these terms to our original terms. Now you might be thinking, Zach, can't we just say that AN is less than or equal to the absolute value of AN, and then obtain the result through the comparison test? Ah, nice try, but the comparison test requires that the terms AN be positive. So we have to be a little bit sneaky here. We'll first say that an is larger than minus the absolute value of an. I'll let you convince yourself that that's a true fact. Now what happens when we add the absolute value of an to all sides of this inequality? On the left, we're going to get 0. That's less than or equal to an plus the absolute value of an. And that's less than or equal to twice the absolute value of an. OK, great everything in sight is now positive. We'll now use our assumption from this problem, which is that the sum of the absolute value of ANs converges. If that series converges, then so does the sum of twice the absolute value of ANs. Multiplying by 2 is not going to affect convergence. Okay, now we can apply our comparison test. We know that the sum of the larger terms converges, and therefore the sum of the smaller terms must converge as well. By comparison, the sum of an plus the absolute value of an must converge. Ah, amazing, we're nearly done. The last step is to note that the series we're actually interested in, the sum of the ans, is simply this series minus this series. And since both of these series are convergent, their difference will be convergent as well. So let's write this down. The sum of the ans is equal to the sum of an plus the absolute value of an, minus the sum of the absolute value of an. Since both of these series are convergent, we conclude that the sum of the ans will be convergent as well. Therefore, any series that converges absolutely must also converge.
which is what we wanted to show. Now the proposition on the previous slide is not officially one of our convergence tests, but it can still come in handy when testing the convergence of certain series. Consider for example this series, the sum of terms cos n over 4 to the n. Note that this series is not made up of positive terms, because cos n can take on negative values. So the comparison test, the limit comparison test, and the integral test are all out. We also don't have an alternating series here. The first two terms are positive, the next three are negative, the next three are positive. It doesn't alternate in the usual sense, so we can't use the alternating series test. Well, that doesn't leave us with much. But one thing that we could try to do is show that this series converges absolutely. If it converges absolutely, then it must also converge. So that's what we're going to do. Consider this series, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the absolute value of cos n over 4 to the n. Okay, this is a series with positive terms, so it unlocks some of our other convergence tests. In particular, I think the comparison test will be especially useful. We can say that the absolute value of cos n over 4 to the n is less than or equal to 1 over 4 to the n. Now the sum of the terms 1 over 4 to the n, that's a convergent geometric series. Right? Let's write that down. It's a convergent geometric series. Ah, okay, amazing. If this is a convergent geometric series, then by comparison, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the absolute value of cos n over 4 to the n must converge. This is a convergent series. That is, our original series, the sum from 0 to infinity of cos n over 4 to the n, converges absolutely. Since any absolutely convergent series is also convergent, our original series converges. We can break up the convergence of an infinite series into a few possibilities. Either the series diverges, or it converges absolutely, or it converges but not absolutely. In that case, we introduce some new terminology. We say that the series converges conditionally. The big difference between conditional and absolute convergence shows up when we talk about rearrangements. When I say rearrangement, I mean take an infinite series and mix up the terms. Change the order in which you add things. Well, hold on a second, Zach. Why would changing the order of the terms affect the series in any way? Order shouldn't matter when we do addition. If I have an infinite series that converges to some s, then when I mix up the terms, it should still converge to s, right? Right? Prepare to be surprised, folks. Consider this infinite series, the alternating harmonic series. We know it converges thanks to our alternating series test, Maybe the sum is s. In fact, if you know a little bit about Taylor series, you can show that this s is ln of 2. I'll let you think about that. But we also showed earlier in this lesson that this series does not converge absolutely. So this is a conditionally convergent series with sum s. What I'm going to do now is apply a rearrangement. I'm going to jumble up these terms in a weird order, and you're going to see that something crazy happens when we add them up. So I'm going to go ahead and leave my first two terms alone, 1 minus a half. But then I'm going to skip ahead and include minus 1 quarter. I'll go back and include 1 third minus 1 sixth. Then I'll skip ahead to minus 1 eighth. Now I go back once again and I include 1 fifth minus 1 tenth. And I'll skip ahead and include minus 1 twelfth. My next term would be 1 seventh minus 1 fourteenth and so on. I'm going to continue this pattern. You can see that I'm using all the same terms, I'm just changing the order in which they appear. But now get ready folks, watch what happens when we simplify this expression. If I take the difference of my bracketed terms, what am I left with? I have 1 half minus 1 quarter plus 1 sixth minus 1 eighth plus 1 tenth minus 1 twelfth and so on. This is exactly half of the series we started with. This is half s. All we did was mix up the terms, and our sum changed from s to 1 half s. These numbers couldn't possibly be the same unless s was equal to 0, but it's not. If you want a quick argument for that, approximate s using its first partial sum. s is approximately 1. Well, according to our alternating series estimation theorem, the error in that approximation is at most this second term, 1 half. 
This means that s really is at least one half, so s and one half s are definitely different quantities. We produced a new sum just by reordering our terms. That's crazy. But the reality is that's something that can happen when working with conditionally convergent series. And in fact, it gets worse. We've just seen that by reordering the terms in the alternating harmonic series, which by the way was conditionally convergent, we can actually change the value of its sum. To see just how far you can push this, consider the following result due to Riemann, Riemann's rearrangement theorem. In my opinion, this is one of the coolest, craziest, and least intuitive results in all of mathematics. Here's what it says. Start with a conditionally convergent series and pick your favorite real number alpha. Alpha can be anything. E to the pi, pi to the e, e to the two to the pi to the e. It doesn't matter. Pick anything you like. Riemann's rearrangement theorem says that you can always find a way to reorder the terms in this series so that the new series sums to alpha. That is crazy. That is so cool. In fact, it gets worse. You can even find ways to reorder your terms to make the series divergent. So in this sense, conditionally convergent series behave pretty badly. The good news, however, is that this kind of thing does not happen for absolutely convergent series. If you hand me a series that converges absolutely, you can reorder the terms as much as you like. The series will always be convergent and the sum will always remain the same.